All right, so we're going to talk about um, some basic art ideas, some basic reproduction of what we see in the world ideas. And I'm Amy Veach, again here with People and Postcards. And I want to start really by talking about line, and then we'll talk about color and abstraction. So there are six basic lines, six lines that we find in all art, and they are really the basics of all of the visual things that we see. They are the basics of writing and numbers and the lines that we use. One line is a circle, a closed circle. One line is horizontal, one line is vertical. There's the zigzag line and the curvy line and dots. And these we will find in all of the things that we draw and write, actually. So um, the pictures that you see now are some ideas about that. And this is actually how I doodle. And you can take those things that you do every day or when you're just sitting around thinking and turn them into repetitive motif lines. Um, one other line that might be included, although it's sort of, um, it, it's, it's a combination of two of the basic lines, is the squared off zigzag line. And um, you can see all of these in what I've done here. So these larger pieces are wrapping paper. That was the intent for them. And um, the two smaller pieces that you see are actually my business card, the back of my business card. I use these lines in everything that I do from three-dimensional art to two-dimensional art to drawing in the sand um, and just thinking. I think, when I think visually, I think about these lines. Um, so use the six basic lines, the circle, the dot, the horizontal line, the vertical line, the zigzag line, and the um, curvy line, and just play with those things and see what you can draw with them. I, in these pictures, have just used them as they are, but see what you can draw with them. All right, so to talk about abstraction and um, how, I think we see this mainly with paintings. Um, people don't understand what is abstract and what is representational. It's easy to say, oh, that's a pitcher and a piece of fruit and a pear and that's a draping over a table but it's a lot harder to talk about a square of color in another color. Um, so let's talk about how one artist can go from a still life to just color on a canvas. And my favorite artist to, to use as this example is Mark Rothko. Mark Rothko uh, painted a lot in the early 20th century and moved into really abstraction and, and fame at the end of the 20th century. So you may know his paintings, you may have seen them. He's in many museums that are quite accessible. So these are actually all paintings that are in the National Gallery of Arts collection. And um, we're gonna start with the still life and with the picture an apple, a pear, a piece of cloth, and a table um, are the most recognizable things in this painting. And move through some figurative paintings. And just with the first three paintings I'm talking about, you can see that he has really abstracted, and it's really not very often that you would see a person with a green face. So the man with the green face is an abstraction. But even if you look at the woman, the figure drawing a painting of this woman, you can see 
how he takes shapes and colors and uses them to really show you that that's a person, show you that that's a figure. But if you squint your eyes or if you walked really far away from this painting, it would look like just color and you wouldn't really recognize the woman without having to think about it. So um, the next three paintings are a, a general progression towards his blocks of color and actually probably the next four paintings. So one is a still life with a clock and it looks very much like something you might see Salvador Dali do. Um, there are very recognizable images and then some abstractions, some things that you think, well, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, maybe it's a table, I'm not exactly sure. It's some sort of surface that these things are resting on. Um, to, I think this might be a painting of people standing, waiting for a train, um, but look how the people look like columns in the train station. We know that one of these people is holding something that could look like a box, but it could also be a newspaper. Um, and if you, if you squint your eyes at that, you see a lot of lines and blocks of color mainly lines and blocks of color. So as we get closer to his using just blocks of color, you see that he uses those as a background in the next two paintings and puts really not very recognizable shapes. Um, you could maybe look at the title of the painting and know what it was, um, but maybe not. So but there are still some things that are recognizable. Um, maybe a bird, maybe a person's head, maybe a palette, a painter's palette, maybe a, a person with a red scarf, maybe a bird with a red feather. And then we go to the painting that is really just um, grays and, and um, different tones with just a little bit of color in it. Um, mainly those shapes. We have a zigzag line, we have a circle, we have horizontal lines and vertical lines and dots. Um, so you can see this is very basic, very pared down, very abstract. What was he painting? I have no idea. What, something in his head? Maybe. Maybe he was looking at something and abstracting it, squinting his eyes, looking at it just with his peripheral vision. I don't know. So we start to get into some really just color paintings. And with, with his work, he's putting together um, similar colors and also dissimilar colors and using just blocks of color and, and shapes of color, but um, you can really see the blocks of color are starting to come through in these next paintings. And um, a lot of red, a lot of red and blue, so really the warmest color red and the coolest color blue, and using those to uh, bring images forward and let them recede into the background. Um, I love to look at how color does that as opposed to what line does. So this is really where we go away from line and just see what color can do for your eyes. So one of my favorite things to do is to take a painting and it's easy to do when you have a slide or a picture of it, um, even on your computer, take it, turn it upside down and see what it looks like. So try that, you can try that with some of these. If you go to the National Gallery of Art, you can look up Mark Rothko. Um, our next pictures, slides, are only blocks of color. I guess a little bit of line of color. Um, and I love when he starts using warm colors together and blurs the, the line between them, blurs them together 
blends them, I would say, a little bit, but they really are still distinctive. Um, and we get to the last few, which are um, some of my favorite Rothko paintings. Um, cool, green, blue, there is line separating them. Um, where there isn't a definitive line separating them, it, if you saw this painting in real life, you would, you would not see much of a line. You would just see that it, it just blends into the other color. And then this, he did a whole series of color, uh, kind of colorless paintings using neutral colors together. Um, also in person, you can see some, some color in these paintings. But this is how we go from that still life of one painter and one idea to a block of color, which is totally abstract. So think about that when you're, when you're working with your postcards, your paintings, your drawings, how you can use abstraction of shape to abstraction of color even, and um, what that says, how you can convey emotion with those things. All right, the next artist is me. And um, these are some paintings that I did many years ago, actually, but um, I wanted to talk about how you can take what's in your mind and just go with that. Um, the first painting is really the, the ancestor of all the others. And as I, as I got, and I think you can see this if you look at these together, <clears throat> but I think you can, you can see it if you, if you just look at the progression too. Um, the first painting was everything that I had to say. It was, and it's, a it's about a three foot, well, probably a, yeah, three foot by three foot painting. And it's, um, it was just everything that I had to say. It was every color, it was every emotion, and um, there is no representation. I'm not looking at anything in order to paint this. I just went to the canvas, I approached the canvas, and I started. Um, that's often the hardest thing to do, is to start. And um, this is actually one of my favorite paintings. Um, the reproduction or the picture of this in the slide does not show the depth of it, but um, it, it does a good enough job to, um, to give you information about what I'm talking about. Um, as you go to the second painting, you can see large red um, blocks of color. And this, um, again, I just approached the canvas and started painting and uh, playing with putting colors together and seeing what happened with that. So there are places where you can see um, complementary colors touching each other or warm colors touching cool colors. All of this is very intentional, even though I just approached the canvas and started painting in blocks. Um, some of it is very um, pure looking and some of it's blended. And um, you can see some small areas where I pulled in colors around other colors. So there's a particular space where um, I wanted the warm colors to be separated from each other. And so I would go in with a cool color um, or the other, the other way around where there were cool colors that needed to be separated. So I went in with a warm color. This is a much larger painting. It's uh, probably um, three by four feet. And um, 
I'm not exactly sure of the measurements of these canvases because I built these canvases so they weren't, you know, I just used the wood that I had and what was available and built them and stretched the canvas on them. Um, as you go to the third painting, you can see that my technique is really different, that there's not so much blurriness, that I'm refining the lines, um, but that big red space is there. And the shape of it is very similar to the red shape in the previous two paintings, the red shapes. I, I draw from both of those. Um, I knew that I wanted to have this open, this o large open space, and I wanted to play with that. One of the things that's hard to see in, in the picture of this is that the left side of the painting, where there are a lot of cool colors, even though it's, it's a large, pretty much white space, I go from very light, warm colors and graduate all the way over to the right side of the painting where they're, you know, very bold and vivid warm colors and that that white actually becomes very cool so using using blue and um, blue and orange there so those are very complementary colors too so it just plays with your eye giving you that open space it's not necessarily sky but it's not necessarily not sky with the third painting there is no red or orange at all i didn't i just had to go away from that but you see the shapes the shapes um, are very similar to the shapes in the previous painting and the previous painting and the previous painting um, but I just continue to refine how I mix the colors how I blend the colors and what colors I'm using so I feel like these and there there are other paintings that I did in this series um, these are all very large paintings. Um, I didn't know what I was painting. People asked me, I asked myself, where do these images come from? I'm not sure. And then years after I did these paintings, I was driving through um, Colorado, actually, where I spent a lot of time as a child and as an adult and um, coming around corners, I saw these images, these were my paintings. So these are actually probably landscapes, maybe going from a forest through to open large views of the landscape. Um, maybe they aren't, I don't know, but they were intended only as colors and images and shapes coming out of my, out of my emotion and my brain and my thought process. So as you're making your art, think about how you can use color to express your emotion, color to just come out of you um, and not have an intended purpose for it. It's not showing you the roundness of an apple or the curve of a road or the shape of a leaf. It's just a shape and a shape can be any color, and a landscape can be any color, and a tree can be any color. So look for those colors and the way that you might abstractly use the color, or how you might use it to show the shape of a leaf against another leaf with only color and not any line at all. So remember the colors that you're using, uh, play with those, I obviously like to use primary and secondary colors in my work, primarily. Uh, not a lot of mixing in huge color blocks, um, although I do, I do mix colors. But I start out with red and yellow and blue and green and orange and purple. Those are my, those are my colors and uh, see how they talk to each other.